and uh, for the office of the spouse of the deputy president, I decided to go on four pillars. And the first one was the boy child, which I have just explained. The other one is, are the widows and the orphans, the people living with disabilities, and chaplaincy outreach and family values. Those four pillars, they have something in common where chaplaincy and outreach and family values are because we are talking about empowerment, we are talking about um, um, uh, advocacy, especially right now because uh, we have very many for the people who are living with disabilities. You know in our culture, many of those people they are considered when you get them like it is um, it is uh, it, uh, you are bewitched or somebody you well, people just simply do not want their shield to have them around and what we've been doing is that uh, we are trying to uh, get this young uh, these people who have people who are differently able to start to accept to sensitize them that these are, are people and human beings with rights and number two, there are people who also will need to access education uh, on, uh, uh, on equal basis to access health. And what my office is doing is one to advocate and sensitize their parents to, about this young generation of uh, with disabilities. We are bringing them to sporting. That's why you find I am one of the people, uh, the, uh, the uh, patron of the uh, Special Olympics, where yeah, we are helping with the inclusion and integration. Well, these young people, when we are these people with disabilities, we are starting to bring them to sporting with people who are well able. And so, not really well able, but I would say they are different labels. Because when we came here, we, we were going to play some football. And uh, we were engaged with these ones who are special in their own way. And let me tell you, the kind of scoring those guys were doing compared to the people who think they are very well able, it tells us those are talented children that we need to bring into that space. So the first thing we are doing is first to do advocacy. The other one is to bring that inclusion in terms of even education. The government of uh, Dr. William Samuel Ruto, His Excellency, and the Deputy President is working to see that they are now, even in the um, ordinary schools, but um, uh, as we are doing this, there is something that uh, we, we are now working on from our office. One is to make sure that when these uh, people with, who are differently abled are taken to the local schools, they get the right infrastructure. Because most of them, when they come into the normal schools, they find it very difficult to compete with the others. Because if you are blind and you are looking at the blackboard, it's unlikely you will see it. And also the capitation that is given for ordinary people with a, with a pen or a pencil is different from what you would get. And so mostly we are doing the advocacy and also, of course, doing this inclusion in terms of games. When it comes to the to the to, to, to empowerment, we are bringing them together in the, in our centre, what we are calling the village, the health village. You remember when I, when you asked me about how are we rehabilitating the boy child? We have done. We have decided that human beings started in a village. And village life is one which uh, is able to bring inclusion, it is able to bring integration, and to remove the stigma. So where we are having that, uh, that rehabilitation center, which is a hospital, these people with disability, we are 
having an occupational therapy place for them. They also get free uh, free medical karma, which uh, uh, the the NHIF we are paying for them because some of them may not be able to afford. Those who, the widows and the orphans and the people with disabilities, we are raising money and we are paying the card for insurance for them so that they can be able to access medical, uh, uh, medical facilities and be able to, uh, to take care of, of themselves. The other thing is that we, we are uh, in the village we have conceptualized that it is going to be one of the biggest achievements that Kenya would have is you have also the vocational training in there, you have the sports academy in there and agribusiness. So that when they come there, those who are doing sporting, the widows, we empower them by making them do um, make it do the tailoring and design. So they design the clothes for the village and also become the people that are going to take care for these uh, people with disabilities when they are around there and they become like the family to them. So it's a big elaborate plan that we are having and we have two of those uh, centers. We have one in Borano, which is Excellency. The Deputy President is helping to, to build. It is not uh, finished yet, but we have 200 of the, uh, uh, the drug, uh, those who are recovering from addicts, they are the ones who are there, and actually building. <laughs> we took them to a rehab center, and immediately they left now they have come to build the health village and i am very sure with the health village and the women who the, the widows who are out there in the, in the especially in um, kajiado kajiado is where you find most of the widows because of the nature of the culture there uh, you have if one man dies you live like five six ten and therefore, we are working with those widows in agriculture. And we are also uh, selling their products. And I'm very sure now, with what we are doing here, we may open market even for whatever they produce. That is one of the areas that I believe that you can partner with me so that as we empower our young people, that is the people who are in addiction, the widows and the orphans. You can also be able to market their products right here in Germany and Europe. I have been speaking about this boy child who, are, who is in drugs. We talk about uh, people who are living with disabilities. If you want to know where they can be housed and educated, Cared for, you will always find them either in the church, in the temple, or even in the in, in the mosque. And that is why the ritual, the well practiced in its pure form, it is the basis of which every human being will be able to access and to be in touch with their humanity. <laughs> I think the world is a good place to live in. And I believe as we work, as we do all these things, let's have a place for family. Because if family was united and family grew together and family worked together, we would not have the frustration that is taking men and women to the place where they are suicidal, they are frustrated, and they are depressed to the level they don't want to live any more. And therefore, as women, and I will talk to the women because we are mothers, and even those who will be mothers tomorrow, let's parent our children better than we are doing now. Let's have zero time to our children. 
uh, once they understand and they can get connected, they don't need things. They need to be loved. They need to be cared for. And the moment you do that, it will be okay. Women folks also let's respect and honor our husbands. <laughs> Rehabilitation Center as a Dockers Legal Foundation that will be able to house all these vulnerable populations and to dignify their future. And therefore, I am giving to you to partner with us so that we can be able to realize this vision and this dream for Kenya and even beyond. God bless you.